Good morning, this is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update for September 13th, 2018. We have an extremely busy Atlantic Basin at this time. We have Hurricane Florence off the southeast coast approaching land. We have an invest in the Gulf of Mexico heading towards South Texas. We have Tropical Storm Isaac, which is uh, losing its identity as we speak as it's heading into the uh, Leeward Islands. We have Subtropical Storm Joyce in the Northeast Atlantic and Hurricane Helene in the East Atlantic. All of these systems are in the East Atlantic are going to move north and kind of weaken and dissipate, so we're not going to talk about those. So let's get right to it. Here is a screen capture of the front page of Hurricane City this morning. Notice the countdown clock is activated and moving. You have about six hours if you live in the Wilmington area to get everything, all your loose objects indoors, your things that you feel might float away in the storm surge. Uh, just get yourself ready. You've got about six hours. Look at the map. It's lit up like a Christmas tree. We have all the systems out here in the East Atlantic. We have Hurricane Florence, Tropical Storm Isaac heading into the Caribbean, and the Invest heading towards Texas. But what you can do with these maps is really zoom in. Let's zoom in on the area that's going to be impacted tomorrow uh, directly by Hurricane, uh, Hurricane um, Florence. And you can see that the more you zoom in on the map, the more it becomes available as far as data and information. Of course, the red line would indicate that this is the uh, hurricane warning zone and storm surge zone. But when you click on the information, for example, Wilmington here, you can see how many uh, housing units uh, actually, let's get away from the models, because look, when you click on the models, it gives you the model data, but also these brown areas show you the, the let's take Jacksonville, for example. There it shows you how many housing units there are, what the population is. Uh, this is a great map to use, and the more you zoom in, the more data becomes available. Also down here, these yellow links right below the map, um, the Hurricane Hunter, latest Hurricane Hunter fixes are in there. Uh, the uh, close-up satellite image. You can get the Florence Best Track data, and most importantly, the surge potential map from the National Hurricane Center. But first of all, let's take a close-up look at our water vapor, uh, not water vapor, this is the enhanced close-up loop of from NASA of Hurricane Florence. And you can see the system is, uh, it's, it's been struggling. Um, there's dry air that's been wrapping into the system from an upper level low that's over Florida, and I'm going to show you some images on that in just a minute. But just wanted to kind of let you know that you can access all these things below the tracking map. There's a lot of great tools down here, ships and buoys. Uh, but the search potential is the big deal here. Here's a still shot of a water vapor zoomed in image from tropicaltidbits.com. And you can see the dry air slot from the upper level low being pulled into the system. And this is what's been weakening this system for about the past 24 hours is uh, dry air getting pulled in from the south and wrapping into the circulation. But don't let this weakening trend lead you to believe that everything is going to be fine on the coast. This is a shot from the Boulevard Peninsula in Texas in the aftermath of Hurricane Ike back in 2008. And Hurricane Ike uh, was a Category 2 hurricane as it moved on shore. And it was a large hurricane, kind of like Florence is, and it had all that time moving across the Gulf of Mexico to build up that storm surge and bring it on shore. So could we see damage like this quite quite possibly along the North Carolina coastline as the right front quadrant moves on shore? It's going to be one heck of a storm surge, potentially up to 12 feet. The National Hurricane Center has some excellent maps for inundation. Uh, we link to that below the tracking map like I showed you earlier. And these maps are zoomable. You can get down to your city or local community to find out how far that water is going to move inland. And these maps are updated constantly based on the current situation. But look at the deep reds. And those are areas up to 12-foot inundation. Uh, the Pamlico Sound is going to – all that water is going to pile up on the backside of the Cape Hatteras area. And all those canals and waterways are going to be inundated with water. Uh, not, so, not so bad as, as much down in Wilmington. In fact, you know, it's funny because when you look at Ike, Ike comparing this to Ike, uh, when Ike hit Texas, uh, in fact, for example, in Galveston and the areas where the eye passed directly over, the surge was not as bad. And then you go a little bit further north where that right front quadrant is, and that's where all the water piles up, and that's what this map indicates. But it's a good tool to use from the National Hurricane Center. 
Then, of course, you add on top of that all of the rain that is going to fall here. Look at these amounts, 15 to 20 inches plus of rain in the impacted areas of uh, from Moorhead City all the way down to Myrtle Beach. It's going to be a very, very heavy flooding event. Even down into the Charleston area, they can end up with four to six inches of rain, and this area is very vulnerable to flooding. We've seen it in the last few years with Matthew and with Irma that they don't even need to take a direct hit in South Carolina to have massive flooding problems. This graphic right here shows the models from a few days ago on intensity. Now, most of the models kept this as a Category 2, Category 3-ish hurricane moving onshore. But the TLCP, which is the Climate and Persistence model, really nailed this. Uh, it, it's showing it uh, 85 knots at landfall, and this was from September 11th at 06Z. And the Navy... Um, one of the versions of the Navy model also had this potential for weakening as it approached the coastline. The other models, not so, not so good on the intensity, but uh, the, the global models didn't predict the weakening as it approached the coast, but some of these other models did predict it. Here's a shot from the HERTRAC program, which uh, is a program that a lot of emergency managers use and the people that really manage uh, the evacuations and whatnot. And they use this program, and there's a link to the program on the front page of Hurricane City in the right-hand navigation bar. Check it out. They, they sell the program to the general public. But here's one of the shots from the Wilmington uh, area. The, this is a potential location impact report. And notice the big gap in the middle there of uh, about eight hours expanse of time where the eye is passing over, and the winds are going to be very light as the center of the hurricane passes over the Wilmington area, and that's going to be a tremendous, I mean, you think about it, you go about maybe six to eight hours before the eye makes landfall, and then the six to eight hours after, they don't show the winds as strong after the eye passes, but this is going to be a long, long, prolonged event for the Wilmington area. Now, if you compare that to Myrtle Beach, there is no eye. Notice there's a, no gap. The eye does not pass over Myrtle Beach. I think their winds are going to be primarily out of the north, northwest and west as this passes just to the north of Myrtle Beach. The eye could still pass over Myrtle Beach. This is based on the 5 a.m. advisory. Things can change. But right now, it's beginning to look like they're going to get mainly offshore winds, which is why the surge projections are not as high for South Carolina. And quickly here, I want to touch on Tropical Storm Isaac real quick. It's going to pass, be passing over Guadalupe and Dominica, the area that was impacted by Hurricane Maria last year. But notice the low-level swirl is out in front of the convection. This is a decoupled system, and wind shear is tearing it apart. Uh, this is not going to be really – in fact, they may even discontinue the advisories here later this morning. So it will be passing through there probably as just an open wave, and it will not be a, considered as a brush or a hit in the Hurricane City database because it's – probably not going to be a tropical entity as it passes through there, at least not a tropical storm. And quickly, here is a map of the ensembles from NOAA, and uh, these are the GEFS ensembles. You can see our system in the Caribbean tries to get in the Western Caribbean. A couple of models want to try to develop this, but most of them really don't. Some of them keep it going toward the Yucatan. Some turn it north, going east of Florida. Some take it into the Gulf of Mexico. We'll have a little bit of time to watch this. It wouldn't be until next week if it was going to regenerate. Uh, the Invest that's heading into South Texas looks like it's pr probably not going to develop. It's not very disorganized. If anything, maybe it becomes a tropical depression, but uh, good thing it's staying away from the oversaturated areas and, and the upper Texas coast, and it's going to be more down towards Mexico. And of course, there are the model trends on Florence, it's going to move inland tomorrow and then start moving north over the uh, uh, Appalachian uh, Valley here and uh, the, the mountain chain and then head north and eventually northeast, but staying inland, it's not going to make it back out over the water, apparently. And finally, I'm not really comfortable doing the I told you so stories, but back in May, I did say that my top five included Sable Island, Nova Scotia, which was already impacted by Tropical Storm Chris earlier in the season. Wilmington, North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. Uh, the highest impact area for the United States, which I predicted back in May. It looks like all these areas are going to be impacted by Hurricane Florence. Of course, the Isle of Youth was already impacted by subtropical storm Alberto early in the season. 
and some of the other ones down in the top 20 may be impacted as well before the season's out. So just want to tell people, and I always harp on this, if I have you in my top five in May before the season starts, go to the store, get everything you need, get your, get your family ready, get your plans ready, know what you're going to do because – even though maybe none of my top five will be impacted, if you're in a high risk, it, more often than not, my areas have been impacted that are in my high risk area. So it's a good thing to pay attention to these predictions, which I release on May 15th every year. And of course, you can find more at hurricanecity.com slash predictions with all my past year's predictions, which have been outstanding. Okay, so to wrap things up, we have Hurricane Florence approaching the southeastern United States. It should be hitting Wilmington and Myrtle Beach tomorrow morning. And then throughout the day, it will be moving further and further inland and weakening. This is going to be a prolonged event, probably 24 hours of hurricane force winds potentially along the coast of these uh, two states, South and North Carolina, all day tomorrow. And then things will begin to wind down on Sunday. I want to wish everyone the best of luck in these areas. Uh, it's still not too late if you're watching this video this morning to get out. If you don't feel safe, pay attention to your local emergency managers and your local news. They will have all the localized information uh, on where you should go, what, where the shelters are, who should evacuate, who shouldn't. If you feel like you're vulnerable, get out. If you have a well-fortified house, there's no point in clogging up the roads and uh, trying to evacuate if you feel like you're safe. Anyway, uh, our schedule, it will be live broadcast on and off tomorrow as this is hitting land, making landfall in uh, the Wilmington area, starting probably early tomorrow morning. There won't be any more update videos on this. Uh, we're, we're all going to be doing from now on. It's going to be live on Facebook and Periscope. So click those links in the logo at Hurricane City to, to watch those feeds or ha have your notice notifications uh, set on your phone so that when we go live, you can watch it as it's happening. All right, that's it for now. Wish everybody the best of luck up there. Jim Williams, Hurricane City, thank you for watching.